I want to talk about stream and batch processing. People always ask me this and it's let, let's look at this and maybe you already know this. The idea is when do you use stream when do, uh, streaming or event processing? Uh, when do you use batch processing? So you have to think about how is the data flowing and this is just the data flow. This is the logical data flow. What would happen in a stream or in an event driven uh, process? Your client will generate the event either uh, on the top. It would write a message to the API that then will get forwarded into your message queue automatically flow into the processing and into the storage. Right? This is basically a single uh, a single direction. This the data flows right through this. And this is a prime example for something that is a stream processing or an event driven. Um, yeah. Process. Now, it doesn't need to have a message queue in here. What I also wanted to show is, let's say um, the client actually drops a file in, in the file storage and you can whenever you use then in the processing something like a trigger that sees this file and, and automatically starts a processing. That's also what you would say. This is this is stream. This is event driven because the data basically uh, or the 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 direction is always in one one direction. You drop here something, something is happening and the the processing starts immediately and processes the data. What's an example of like a client? Here, this could mm -hmm. be um, could be another system in your uh, in your company that is generating transactions, or this could be a car in an IoT environment, or a weather station, or um, yeah. So as long as it's coming from another source. Yeah, this could be your or app your app that it, that it, where you write the tweets and then the tweets get sent to the API, which actually happens. And then they they're processing it on the fly and it shows up in there on, on your, on your timeline. I see. What if you are, um, just to give you like an example, um, if you're scraping data from PDF files on mm -hmm. a website, mm -hmm. And then you have, you know, the scraper that puts the data somewhere. Yeah. Is, is that your, is that scraping script your client or is it uh, where it's stored? Mm, that that's, sense? that's more towards where we're going to go now towards the batch processing part. Okay. Where you would have some sort of a processing and this processing okay could do multiple things. As you said, this processing could actually scrape on scrape data on the internet and then put it into a storage. But mostly okay. this will be on a schedule or we would manually start this. Right. So that's always okay. the, the telltale sign of, of some batch processing is if you have a a fixed schedule or if you start something manually, that's always the, the sign. With stream processing, you have some triggers that start and do something, but with batch it's, it's very often in a manual, like the scraper or um, the client puts a file into the file store. And instead of you have a trigger that starts the processing, the processing gets started every 10 minutes or every hour and reads all the files that are new there and processes them. That's batch okay. processing. Or the other way would be even with the message queue, if you say, okay, the client writes the data through the API, it gets into the message queue, but I start then my processing on a schedule every 10 minutes and process this, then this, the, this early part here, this would be some kind of a stream processing, but this is more or less than batch processing because your, your, your real processing where you take the data, validate it, transform it, and put it into the storage that is then coming on a schedule and it's starting every X minutes and reads a bunch of messages at once. That's then batch processing. So it's it's important to understand that not every time you see a message queue, it, it it's event driven or it's, it's stream processing. You can also just use this message queue in a batch processing way where it, 
it's not really it's not the optimal use case how you would do it because with these with these queues this um, you actually want to have a nice distribution over time i think i also said talked about this last time you you don't want these peaks where um, you're getting every hour what every hour starts a job and you you're putting real pressure on the queue you actually want to have some nicely distributed um, workload so you can you can um, you have enough headroom to um, to handle spikes in the whole in the whole processing so keep this in mind whenever you have a schedule you start something manual batch processing whenever something gets automatically streamed through or whenever when you can set a trigger on something on an event that is happening then uh, this is more in terms of uh, this would then be event driven slash stream processing the typical way of when you talk about stream processing is the the one where you have something like a message queue and you stream the data straight through into your into your storage is there any situation where you have a combination of both a schedule and a trigger? Yeah, you could, you could like what you could do is you could say, okay, um, this is my OLTP storage. This is my NoSQL database above here, right? This is, this is where I keeping um, my live data. And once, uh, uh, once every hour or something you start a processing here that for instance takes here the file all the files and reads all these files and puts them into a data lake or into a data warehouse or something then you would you then you you would connect these two and have then you have two use cases yeah solved with this for using both for or for interconnecting both you need some kind of a storage in between in this case, it would be your file storage here. It would most likely be your message queue, just like we've shown here, where instead of just streaming the data out here, you could set the processing also to, to connect above here and then read the data every hour out of the message queue, which, as I said, would maybe not be the thing that you actually want to do because you would put a, much, uh, would put a lot of load on the queue. Yeah. In this case, there's another thing I, uh, we could talk about is, um, so if you want to combine this, what could you do? You could say, okay, I'm, I'm generating here two processings, one from the queue that is actually taking the data, putting it into the store. Another is dumping it into S3 or into a file storage. And then this processing actually reads then the file. So you would like, you would, you would go from here. Ooh, that's fat to here, right? And then you could say, okay, this is my data lake here. Uh, I'm using my I'm using my batch processing to put this into a warehouse, or this is my this is my temporary my staging store here, and I'm I'm putting this then into the data lake or in the warehouse. Just generating instead of JSON, I'm generating here parquet files because they're easier to read in the in the final data lake. 